you know, it's pretty. Hey, what up everyone, Michael B. Petty here. I know it's been an awfully long time since I've put out a video. Um, I've had a lot of work, family, personal issues going on. Uh, maybe in a live stream I'll talk about all that stuff, but um, right now I want to talk about the most pertinent issue, I guess, and that's Amberlynn Reed. Oh my god, surprise, surprise, right? Um, I It's been a while since I've made a video, so I've missed a lot of stuff. Well, I haven't missed a lot of stuff. If you follow me on Twitter, um, I pretty much react to like all the videos on Twitter like while I'm watching them live. So if you want to follow me over there, then that's like a great place to go. Uh, sorry, it's hot and I'm sweating like forever, like crazy right now. I just want to mention it all. Now we'll mention it. Mention it all. Mention it all. Because no I just want to talk about everything that's happened so far since I've kind of been gone um, and give my two cents about <laughs> what's going on and just rant a little bit about what I'm seeing. Um, I'm not going to like include clips and do all that shit. I'm just going to talk about what I'm seeing. If you follow Amberlynn, then you probably know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but first, before I do that, I do want to like give a shout out to like a to some ladies or whatever that are like putting out some really interesting and good videos in my opinion. Um, people like Think Pink and Kit Kat Reacts and Life of a Free Spirit and then like also Danny Sue's, Aphrodite's Peach, Rosie Ranch, Charlie Gold. There's just a lot of like women out there right now that are doing really good videos and I, I, I really like them. I enjoy them thoroughly. I watch them all. So um, yeah, go and give those people a check. Like go and check those people out. They're fucking awesome. What I want to do is I want to like talk about a little bit about the good things that I'm seeing, I guess, in the Amberlynn world first and then I'm going to talk a little bit and then I'm going to talk about like what is obviously going wrong. Um, first, Eric. Okay, Eric, let's just overlook the whole baby thing. That was obviously really bad. I'm kind of impressed with his response to that. I don't know if I was, I don't know if the bar is so fucking low over there that like any little bit of accountability, I'm just like, yes, we're doing it. Like, I don't know if that's what it is, but like he kind of, he, he was like, yeah, I was wrong. Like, and I, sh and I didn't know and I, and I should know better. I mean, I actually put more blame on like the, the child's parents than on Eric. I mean, if you're good, if you're like giving your baby to people and you don't know how they take care of babies, that's on you. I don't know. That's pretty fucked up. That whole thing was really effed up. Um, but yeah. I'm kind of impressed with like them living their lives and it seems like Eric's like trying to make a change and he's trying out new things and you know like that's all you can really hope for right like um and I'm just gonna be like you keep doing it dude if you're gonna go to school go to school if you're gonna learn how to drive learn how to drive if you're gonna like lose weight then lose the weight like I think it's cool and I think maybe you can set an example for some other people in that house but who knows um Ricky that guy fucks. Like, I like Ricky. I don't care. He can do no wrong in my eyes at this point. I just like him. I think that he is one of those people who is just, like, genuinely charismatic and, like, kind of cool to be around for some... I don't know. He's just one of those people. And those people translate really well on camera. People who are, like, more enthusiastic or more um, happy-go-lucky. Like, it's, it's easy to notice, right, when you're watching. Like, you just... You just see a genuineness about him. I just like him. I just think... I don't know. I just like him. I like him. Amberlynn, the good thing is about Amberlynn, I, there's nothing good about Becky right now, so I'm not gonna even like try to do that. The good thing about Amberlynn, she has managed to make people tune in to some of the most mundane, boring ass content that I've ever seen. Amberlynn has managed to make some of the most boring, mundane shit like profitable and watchable. I don't know how she does it. I mean, I know that there are people on here that like literally live stream themselves counting to like 500,000 and shit like that. She's managed to make like some of the most trivial and boring shit like so controversial and for that like kudos like I don't know how you do that I don't know how you make like going to Target like a whole thing but like you're so ignorant to things that like you don't even like you're not even aware of what like people are seeing and it's kind of riveting to me like I enjoy watching it for some reason and I watch it on my break and I watch it when I have a chance and I get away from my friends or whatever I'll watch it and I'll tweet it real tweet about it real quick and she's got me hooked I don't know what to say I know a lot of people are like they like, like don't watch blah 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 but it's like dude People are gonna watch, it is what it is, like, I don't care. Like, and I'm gonna watch it too, because I'm fucking, I've been watching it for like four fucking years at this point. So I'm gonna watch it too, and I'm not gonna feel bad about watching it. So, it, I mean, I use Adblock, it is what it is. She's managed to make something so trivial profitable, and for that, like, kudos. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, that's probably the best I have for Amberlynn, that's, that's all I'm gonna give her right now, is like, you've managed to make your YouTube career profitable, and you like to flex on strangers with your money. I don't know. You've, congratulations, you've done it. Um, now I want to get into like the more 
negative aspects of like what I've been seeing. Becky, it's like watching Intervention and like uh, seeing all the enablers on there and like you see the like, the like in interventionists like talking to the family and they're like, okay, so like if we bring them in here and we're like, if you don't start doing, stop doing heroin, Jack, like what are we gonna say? Uh, and the person's like, oh, I'm gonna give them my debit card and let them go hog wild. Like, and they're like, no, that's not what we do. Like, we're not trying to enable, like, we cut them off, sir. Like, you have to, like, say no. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy to me how, and Amber's been, like, boasting about, like, her boo losing weight. I don't see it. I mean, that's just me. I don't see the weight loss. Um, if that's in fact true and she has the like wherewithal and like the n mental know-how to like lose weight herself But she's like actively participating in like the slow death of her girlfriend Like that's crazy Like if you're not if you're going out and getting the food for her to eat in her die with me videos Like you're fucked up. I don't know how else to put that and I'm not gonna like Sugarcoat that like it's fucked up like it's fucked up to watch someone like actively go out there and like help her girlfriend like die And I'm not saying that Amberlynn isn't culpable in any of this because obviously there's more dynamics to that relationship than we will ever know obviously there's something else going on in the background that like has made them stuck and I don't care what anyone says I when I look at them I see like a toxic relationship that is just what I see um I don't know if there's like if there's like physical or like mental or emotional abuse going on behind closed doors I can only guess as to what is happening but I mean it's not good whatever's happening behind closed doors that we're not seeing it's not good because they're both incredibly stagnant um, they're both incredibly toxic to one another and it's just it's sad to watch it's sad to like really watch a couple just like burn in flames like it's just I don't know I don't know I don't know if there's like a worse couple out there I don't know if like it's like some Bonnie and Clyde shit I don't know if they have like in there it's like us against the world babe it's like us and the mobility scooters against the world I don't know what it is I don't I can't begin to like to like unpack what's going on there because I don't see it. I'm gonna talk about the th the psychiatrist or whatever. I'll be the sociopath that just fucking says it, whatever, I don't care. Um, I think it's highly improbable that she went there and was diagnosed with like four mental disorders like in the, pro in the course of an hour. I just don't see it. I really, I know she was seeing a psychiatrist and usually a psychiatrist's job is to diagnose and then to prescribe. Like that's what they do, they're not, Typically, psychiatrists, at least in America, they don't go out of their way to do, like, behavioral therapy. That's, like, that's not really their job. Like, there are some that'll do it. I've seen a psychiatrist that, like, when, I, when I've seen him, like, we spend, like, hours together. And that's not the norm. That's usually not the norm for, like, psychiatrists to, like, spend that much time with their patients and, like, talk about things and how they're feeling. That's just not. Usually, like, cognitive behavioral therapy or, like, whatever kind of therapy you're going to or whatever, like, typically it's the therapist's job to, like, help re- evaluate behavior and like change behavior that's their job psychiatrists don't really do that that's not their like they're usually there to just prescribe medicine and like help diagnose that's pretty much it but i just don't see it how how someone this person that has never seen amberlyn before knows nothing about her is going to like diagnose her with all of these like really serious things like in the course of like an hour i just don't see it i don't see it i also think it's really weird that this is the same psychiatrist that everyone in her like inner circle sees. I personally wouldn't be able to do that. I can't see someone who is seeing everyone else. Like I just can't do it. And I'm not gonna go and see the same psychiatrist or the same therapist that all of my friends are seeing. Cause I just think that it's like a conflict of interest. I don't really want to be going in there and like talking about my feelings. And sometimes those feelings would have to do with those people. I don't know, I don't really wanna, I don't even wanna like be exposed to being in a like situation like that where like my best interest could be like not being put forth because like this person that is like our doctor has like may have if they have a conflict of interest now because it's in their best interest to like help all their patients like I don't I just don't like that I just I would rather there be the ther like the psych therapist or the psychiatrist that only I see and none of my family or friends see I just think that it's weird I think it's bizarre now we all knew that when she went and saw the therapist that like she was going to come out with like a bunch of different things I don't I, don't, I like I said, I don't think that the psychiatrist went in there and like diagnosed her with these four different things. I just don't see it, especially things like bipolar disorder and like, um, what was the other one she said? I can't even fucking remember right now. I know it was anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder. I don't know, was it an eating disorder? I don't think it was because that also surprised me too, is like how she didn't come out being diagnosed with an eating disorder. I was sure that she was gonna come out being like, oh guys, um, I showed her my knuckles and I'm transracial now. I honestly thought that she was gonna come out being black. I thought that like, cause at this point, 
it's so far-fetched and it's so bizarre that like anything's possible and I wouldn't be surprised if she was gonna be the Rachel Dolezal of Kentucky at this point I totally thought she was gonna come out of that being like well guys looks like I'm gonna have to get a skin change or something like cuz turns out I'm transracial like it, it the the shit that like comes out of her mouth sometimes is so crazy I could see that happening and so um, when she was talking about um, her, her psychiatrist point I knew from then on out Anything that happens now is just gonna be an excuse. Like, it's gonna be, oh, well, it's my mood stabilizers. Oh, well, it's the, my it's my anxiety. Like, oh, it's this, it's, everything is just a means to an end for Amberlynn. And if it's a way for her to like, to sidestep any kind of responsibility, then she's gonna do that. And the psychiatrist was just that for her. That's just, that's just how I saw that. Um, the weight loss doctor. I mean, that was a joke. Honestly, like, I mean, we've seen all the videos of her literally lying one day and then the next day. We've seen all that. And I find it very hard to believe that, like, a weight loss doctor or surgeon... This man can, does surgery. That's what... He's a weight loss doctor and he, and he does weight loss surgery on his patients. Every weight loss doctor I've seen, I've seen a couple now, they're incredibly thorough. Obviously, there's going to be some doctors out there that aren't that great. But, like, typically when you go into fields like that, like, you're not becoming a weight loss surgeon because you want to make a lot of money. Like, that's usually not the case, right? Because there are way more fields of medicine where you can make way more money. And you have to have some kind of empathy for people. And she also talked about how this weight loss doctor was fat at one time and has lost weight. I find it hard to believe that he wouldn't be incredibly thorough and incredibly clear cut with her about what she needs to do. I just find that very hard to believe. Either she's incredibly just stupid and she doesn't actually like, like, like what the people are telling her isn't like staying in her and it's just going in one ear and out the other, or she's just lying. Like, I just, I don't know. I just don't see it. Sorry about that. The battery died. So if the if the angle or whatever switched a little bit, it's because I had to put the new battery in. Anyway, the weight loss doctor. I just don't think that like he would be that negligent to like see a 600 pound woman come into his office and not be like, we're going to do something to save your life. Like, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Even when I, like, I hate to use me as an example, whatever. when I went and saw my doctor, he was like very clear with me. He was like, look, you're really overweight. This is, it's do or die at this point, Michael. Um, it hasn't changed for you in X amount of time. These are what we will, th these are the steps you need to take to save your life. And he, him and his team worked incredibly hard to like help me get to where I am now. And I'm still losing weight. I'm still trying to get to my goal weight. Um, and, but it's worked. And I think as soon as you like give yourself up or you um you relinquish control of all that stuff and you like actually start to follow people's advice especially medical professionals advice it'll work and the diet that he gave her wasn't that crazy um it wasn't at all he wanted her i know that she tried to like manipulate it and shift it into being something more insidious than it was and it's not it's not at all and charlie gold even proved that by following the diet that the doctor wanted her to prove bitch sodium isn't gonna kill you that's not what you need to be worried about right now like real talk and i know a lot of people are like and hey, don't eat this don't eat that she needs to be eating like less than 1500 calories a day and like mainly eating high protein low carb meals that's what the doctor was trying to explain to her even becky got it like when when he was like saying like oh so like if you're gonna eat a meal what should you eat and she was like chicken and he was like yeah that's exactly right and Amber was like, huh? Like, she's a f idiot. Like, she's a literal moron. Like, I mean, I don't even... I, I was just, like, watching that. I was like, she didn't get it. Like, she's never going to get it. There's nothing we can do to make her get it. Like, she's not going to get it. So the weight loss doctor was... Eh. Honestly, seeing the psychiatrist and seeing the weight loss doctor, she had been promising that for, like, three or four months or whatever, ever since the whole, like, shrimp mukbang, Burger King, uh, obese to beast fiasco or whatever... She was honestly just trying to people to trying to get people off her ass. She was tired of people coming at her. Um, she was gonna try to make the change or whatever. It was all a way to like get people to stop coming at her so bad because Amberlynn cares a lot, not so much about what her audience thinks, but what people, other YouTubers and like what other influential people think about her. So it when she was doing it, it wasn't she wasn't going to see the weight loss doctor for herself or for her audience. She was doing it to like appease like people like obese to beast and appease people like everyday damn fitness that was what her goal was because and she sees those people and she sees their numbers and she because 
all those people are like subscriber counts to her like she sees those numbers and she's like oh i want to make good with these people right because i think in her mind she sees these people having some kind of integrity well they do have integrity she sees these people having integrity and respect in their communities and she wants that and so um that was her way of like kind of like appeasing these people but she didn't even follow through i mean she lasted, what, six hours on that diet? Like, even that, because I think on the way home from, like, the weight loss doctor and stuff, she was, like, eating out already. So, I mean, eating 1,200 calories a day, eating 1,500 calories a day, is it a big change? It is, but it's doable and you'll live. Like, a lot of people do. Um, and at this point, when you're, like, 570 pounds, like, I think the doctor saw you and he was like, I need her to lose 100 pounds, like, in the next two months. Like, I need her, cause in order to save her life, in case something happens, she needs to lose 100 pounds, get that blood pressure down a little bit, get the BMI down a little bit, help with the lymphedema swelling, and he, and he saw her and he was like, we're gonna, you need to lose weight fast. And I don't know if that didn't register for her, I don't know, I mean, obviously it didn't register for her, because when she sees herself, she doesn't see that, but that's what I saw when, I saw a doc, when she was, what? What convoluted story we were being retold, that's what I saw. So uh, that's my take on the whole weight loss thing. The whole chronological shit, that's all the way of her to just trying to like confuse her audience and to get people off her cycles of like, cause she's so predictable at that point. Like those cycles and stuff that like Justine and the charts and stuff that people like reference all the time, it's, ac it's incredibly accurate. Like whoever, like the guy who made that, what's his name, Archie or whatever. Um, the guy who made that like, and the people who like it is it, it's real like it's and it's so like accurate that like it's so easy to follow and i think she must have caught wind of that and so by by splitting up the videos and not putting them out in order or doing these stupid hauls and like showing what's in her purse and like reacting to lying videos without really reacting to them like that was just her that's just her way of throwing everyone off because she doesn't want people to like see that she's gaining weight and she's not following her plans and it's just crazy the Weight Watchers thing is so dumb. Like, I can't even believe that she can form her mouth to, like, say these sentences out loud. Like, oh, well, like, it didn't, like, that weight loss plan didn't work for me, but I know how Weight Watchers works, and I know how it works, and I know how to make cal count calories, and da-da-da-da-da. You don't. You're 600 pounds. Everything you know is wrong. Let's literally, what, the, that, if she came, if, if she goes to another doctor, the first thing that doctor needs to say is everything you've learned in your life is not right. Like, that's the first thing that she needs to be told is it's all wrong. Every single thing, every belief, all your whatever bullshit that you have and going on in your brain, it's wrong because it's it's gotten you to this point. It's gotten you to this. So you need she needs to just let it go. Like, let it go, bitch. Weight Watchers isn't going to work for you uh keto ain't gonna work for you you need medical intervention you need help like that's and it's fine to need help but like if to not follow their advice it makes no sense to me like that's why i'm like i don't know she have a death wish or something like is she trying to die? like is that the goal now is like she's trying to die i don't know it feels like that when she was going on on that snapchat rant about how like everyone should be grateful for her for doing what she does and like for even putting videos out and like she does this out of the kindness of her heart and that's all bullshit like you know there's people like Tess Holiday and like people like that like the haze or whatever that like weaponize their bodies and I get it to an extent weaponizing your body is like kind of like an oldest trick in the book and so like by being just existing like it's controversial and like you push the boundaries even more by like saying dumb shit and doing dumb shit and gaining weight on purpose to be fat like it's so that way you can get more pre press like it's crazy right like and so i think she followed that mold right because it worked i mean it worked to an extent for tess holiday i'm sure she's made a lot of money i know she's a shitty person but she's made money i mean there's other shitty people on this planet that make good money by being shitty people so i think amber kind of saw that and so but she took it one step further like she was like I'm gonna go way further than just like weaponi weaponizing my fat body. I'm gonna weaponize my morale, my mortality. Like I'm going to literally like put my death and my well-being and my health on my audience's back. And then when they don't support me or they don't fall or like they don't love me or um, they don't watch or blah blah blah, like it's their fault, right? Because she always says when she said that before, like her vlogs don't get that many views, but when she eats, she gets way more views. And she's like, that's what my audience wants. My audience wants me to eat. So like, and so it's like, I don't know, like it's it's past the point of like 
a slightly overweight person eating food on camera for money. We're watching a 600 pound woman like sl kill herself on camera. She thinks that like, she is like, <laughs> like taking all of the sins of everyone, that every fat person that's ever existed before her and she's putting it on her back and she's, you know, she's carrying the cross up to the hill. Like, I, she, you swear to God that she's being like crucified for like, being a fat YouTuber or something. And it's like, to that everyone, I have to say like, bitch, get off the cross, we need the wood. Like, it's fucking dumb. Like, no one wants you to be fat. No one wants you to die. Like, e like even the people you consider your most disgusting, vile, slummy hater doesn't actually want you to die. Like, they want you to wake the fuck up and lose some fucking weight and save your life and not do die with me's, mukbang, what I ate on vacation videos. Like, they want you to like actually wake the fuck up and try. Like, it's not that hard. It's not, it's not that hard to see. So I don't know why she continues on this path. And then to talk, and this is what also gets me with Amberlynn too, right? I keep clapping, I'm sorry. I'm like super hyped for some reason. Um, one thing that also gets me with her is she's constantly like talk, like we, when she was younger, she talked about how she was like kind of alone and she was isolated and she didn't have people who loved her. And I mean, we kind of see that even now, like she's, I don't think that those people that she lives with are her friends. I, they just live with her. And I know that in her mind that they're her friends. Um, and the people that come over to hang out with them are her friends, but they're not. Like, they're her roommate's friends. And, um, I think it's sad because, like, if she had not been such a manipulative person on her channel and was so, like, condescending to people, she could have had an audience of people that actually cared about her. Like, honest to God, she could have had a lot of people really come out and support her and, and, like, really, like be meaningful in her life but she chose to like troll people and she's chosen to like be like this incredible like uh, her own saboteur and like and then like blame her audience for things and it's like dude the only person you're trolling yourself and you're trolling yourself into a tomb and i'm saying tomb because we're at a point now where i don't think they make holes that big so i'm just saying like it's bad like we're we're end game we're like this is the fourth quarter. Um, there's like a minute left on the clock. We're down by 40, so there's no overtime, dog. Like, it's over. Like, we're done. Like, and I don't see it changing. And these new videos that she's been posting out, there's no change. Like, she's gaining weight. Like, it's crazy. She's gaining, she's ordering like pints of like uncooked cookie dough and or brownie batter and then like being upset about it. Like, it's weird. Like, I am like, Bitch, that was a godsend. Like, you shouldn't have just not ate it. Like, if you didn't like it, you should just not ate it. Like, that's a godsend for you, right? Like, I don't know. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's absolutely bonkers out here. And I feel bad for the people out there that look up to her. I don't know if there's a lot. Of, I know that she's like, Danny Sue's and After Ice Peach have like talked about this a lot, like her advocacy or whatever. I don't know who she's advocating for because there's not a lot of like 28 year olds out there that are 600 pounds with a a, like a poppin YouTube channel and it is a poppin YouTube channel people get mad at me for saying that but it is like she gets like a hundred thousand views a video like it's a good like it makes a lot of money but like there's not a lot of people out there that like have like this disposable income to like eat out all the time and like do nothing all day but color and like reorganize your clutter if that's what you want to call it like there's not a lot of people out there, so I don't know who she's advocating for because typically, like, people who are that overweight live incredibly isolated lives because it's hard to go out and do things. It's hard to, like, go out and be a part of a productive person in society. It's just hard because it's hard to just exist because it's hard. Your body hurts. Everything hurts. I know how this feels. I've been there. Like, it's, you become incredibly insular and you don't, like, look outside and you don't do things out, outside of your home because it's too hard. And... I think that whenever she posts these videos and she posts these crying videos of like how sad she is about being fat and then she wants to go and then do a food bucket list vacation to Lexington, like she's spitting in the face of like all those people out there that may actually be overweight like her. And I, I mean, there's people who are big like her out there and I don't think there are people big out there like that are e killing themselves on camera for money, but like there are people and i think it just spits in the face of all those people like all those people out there that are like 
wow, you have all the means, you have the ability to like fix this and like you choose not to. Like every day is a choice to just be a, a worse person. Like that's crazy. Like, and I don't feel bad for her for having people who resent her. I don't, I resent her. I'll admit it. Like, I think it's bullshit. Like, I think it's dumb that, like, she gets on here and flexes about her money and does all this dumb shit and she trolls her audience and then she gets paid for it. Like, I don't know. I think it's fucked up. I, it is what it is. But, I mean, that's capitalism. That's consumerism for you. I'm not going to, like, sit here and change the rules. Like, that just is what it is. So, um, I don't know. I just, I understand why people, like, despise her. I get it. I mean, I don't like her either. So, um... But, you know, at this point, you just, like, so fucking, like, invested for some reason. Because I, in the beginning, she was a nice person. And then, like, all this other shit she started doing was just awful. And you're like, wow, she's trash. Like, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of my feelings out there. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Michael B. Petty. I'm going to try to do a live stream here soon. It's so hot here. Like, on sitting here in front of the light right now, like, with the AC pumping and the fan. I'm sure you can hear the fan. It's fucking hot in my room. That's been a really big reason as to why I don't really want to do videos and live streams is because it's so hot. Like, I'm gonna try to do a live stream here and like within the next week. And maybe I'll re react to like some of her like greatest hits from the past month that like you haven't seen me react to. But like I said, again, if you really want to get my two cents on like what's happening in her videos, follow me on Twitter. I, I, tw I, tweet, I tweet way too fucking much, honestly. I kind of like it. I don't, it's awful. Um, but... And like I said, I, I shout out a bunch of people at the beginning of this video. I think they're amazing. And I they do, I like seeing other people's insights and I like seeing other people's perspectives on things. I'm seeing a lot of new people and new faces and I like it. I like seeing what they have to say. Um, she's inspired a lot of people to come on here and give their opinion about her. I mean, kudos to Amberlynn. So, I mean, watch them. And until next time, everyone, toodles.